these interviews, the last two times I've done this, I've had deer come in on me, but... I don't think they're moving, they're gonna be moving for a bit. You can see that fog behind me, it's November 2nd. It's only about 28 this morning, 27. My quiver has ice on it right now. Um, this fog is really heavy. I can only see maybe 60 yards. We got up in this tree, had a little bit of a debacle this morning. I started going up this red oak, 10 feet to my right, which looking at it now, I really wish I was in. But it was twisting and bending and I, I couldn't get up it. it. No matter what side I went on, I eventually was going, putting the sticks on it. Backwards leaning tree, because the way it twist. And I couldn't get up the damn thing, so I moved over here into this, I think. I actually think this is a, I guess a red oak as well. And it's a really good spot. Now the crappy part is the wind is not really deciding what it wants to do. I have my ozonics running and about every five minutes I catch a heavy whiff of it right in the face which means it went So I'm over on this little flat that I found on Onyx. I've hunted 150, 200 yards that way and the deer always come from this way. And now I'm over here, I kind of figured out why. So, up above me, it sort of crests out, and it turns into like green briar. And I'm on this little flat that's probably two acres. And it's all maple, hickory, and oak. And it's pretty open, and there's a few skid roads on it. Now, one thing that makes me nervous is this skid road has a couple of really nice looking branches with no scrapes, which sucks. But on the other hand, Monday was when I, I heard a grunt from up in here. It was like a buck roar, real deep, long, growly, and it was right in this bowl. I'm sitting right in this, there's a draw right beside me, and I was on the other side of that, and I heard it come from here, and I've seen five buck tailing doe from this direction in the last four days. So I know they moved through here, so I kind of took a shot in the dark. The wind's iffy at best. It's kind of coming up this hill, swirling. It's hitting the thermal that's going down still. And it's kind of doing one of these and sort of catching like an undertow almost. And I'm right smack in the middle of it. So we're gonna see what happens. It doesn't feel that cold, but I think it's because this fog is so heavy. I don't know. It's weird. It should feel a lot colder. Maybe I'm just still heated up from hanging this, but... Unfortunately, I got up here, and everything about this tree is awesome. Except over my right shoulder, which is a giant open bench I could shoot out to 50 yards. There's one tree. It's... 18 foot tall and the tops are like this blocking me for probably 45 degrees of my shooting radius so I'm hoping nothing cruises right there because that'll be painful there's nothing I can do I mean I, I can't even squeeze an arrow through if I wanted it looks like this I'll show you here in a second so we're gonna see what happens my cameras were lit up yesterday but not till like past one o'clock um, I have a couple cell cams and tons of pictures, three, four, five, not a whole lot going on early. Should be able to hear them coming. The, uh, the leaves are frozen and dry from all the wind. Let's see, I hope I got more to show you than just me talking, that's for sure. It'll be a long, cold day if that's the case, but I got bedding my north, northeast, to my east and south is a creek bottom that I normally sit in, that I see a lot of deer travel in. I hate not being in it, but this wind was, I, I couldn't, I couldn't be down in it with this wind, it's impossible. So, hopefully I catch them up high, we'll 
we'll see. I know the big boy's been down in the bottom here to my to my east about 500 yards. He cruised one of my cell cams twice this week, so he's not like he's far. About a little 50 acre patch he's living in.
expected that from where I'm sitting at. Even though I'm in the middle of like four different areas of bedding, there's no food here. There's oak trees, but I've not seen one deer head towards them at all. Whoops. So, oh, hold on. I was gonna move spots. I decided to stay put because I've never sat an evening in this spot. And I wanted to see what the movement looks like because the morning movement was identical the entire time. These deer were walking within 10 feet of each other. I didn't get winded or picked off on 
on Saturday, but it seems like they just know when you're in an area. And usually these multi sits in the same tree, they seem to dwindle quick, but these deer are chasing. So I could run nose to nose with a buck that I picked up on camera yesterday on the other side of the property. You just never know. I'd like to see some dope movement though. If I see some dope movement, it's always good. It's like jump in the water. Almost had a really nice eight point driving in here. It is November 5th. It's about 8.30 in the morning. Uh, we made the drive down here on Delmarva. We are in the southern eastern shore on a piece of property, hunting it for the first time, scouted it this summer. Pretty excited at lunchtime. I'm gonna go pull one of the trail cameras I have across the way. Because it's a new spot, we weren't quite sure where to sit running what I think is a transition point. We've got beans over here, behind me. So we got some beans there and we got bedding, I believe over my other shoulder, but there is a, a driveway and a field of sorts over here. So I'm hoping this makes a little bit of a pinch point, but unfortunately it's kind of warm rain last night supposed to get up to 64 today and I am getting destroyed by mosquitoes right now so we'll give this spot another hour and a half and uh, there's another spot I'm gonna try ground hunting tonight if I see good sign from the trail camera and good deer sign in there um, if not we just may make a big jump and move back to Delaware for the afternoon hunt so Fingers crossed, we need a hot dough. I need to see some red action. <clears throat> Unfortunately, this trip down the southern eastern shore did not produce much of anything. I saw a couple dough this morning, and when I got out of the stand, I decided to pull my trail camera and I really didn't see much of anything worth shooting. I saw some does and a couple smaller bucks, but not really what I was after. So I decided to get out of town and head back up to Delaware. You can see I switched into some of my lighter gear here because the temperatures were pretty high and it was hot. Even though Preston was seeing some good pre-rut and early rut activity this week, including some chasing, I wasn't seeing much of anything. And I'm pretty sure the hot temperatures these few days that I had the chance to hunt we're generally suppressing deer activity overall.
both come within 20 yards. This flock of turkey over here are running a gobbler around. It's really quiet out this morning. You can probably hear the turkey, but it's really quiet. I had these deer right on top of me, and I couldn't hear them walking, so it's going to be a lot of looking around. I'm hoping these turkey will come across. I can see where they were scratching all in here, because I'll pop one of those in a minute. I've never killed a gobbler in the fall with a bow. I mean, heck, I've never killed a turkey in the fall with a bow. So I'll definitely, definitely take that opportunity, but it is cold. It can't be more than upper 20s right now. Everything's solid ice. 
Well, that's the way the cookie crumbles. Uh, that dough never brought him back through. I thought maybe she was gonna. Because I had seen a bunch of dough filter through that way in the morning, first light, and back through later on. So I thought maybe she would follow suit. And she didn't, so that's that. And you saw there, I passed that goiter buck because it was just weird. It was really weird. And his rack's pretty cool, but it's not big. And if it got bigger, it'd be really cool because he's got three main beams and some palmation. But um, them goiters are weird. I know it's warts. It's like a wart thing that grows on their skin and it doesn't hurt them, but it looks painful. Is it one eye's all messed up? Ugh. He wandered off into the bedding too, so it's about 10.45. It's getting pretty toasty out. I'll bet you it's close to 50 already. I gotta be to work here soon, so I gotta get out of here, but I haven't seen a deer in about 45 minutes anyways, so. But keeping on, fortunately, another day down. No tag filled. What's up everybody? Sitting here, finishing, editing up this week's video, and I wanted to do a little exit clip. It's mid-November here and the firearm seasons are in. They're set to start soon in PA, in Maryland, the other states that we've been hunting. The most exciting time of the year for us has just passed and, oh, and uh, you know, we're here in firearm seasons. The rut's still going on, but it definitely seems like they're in that post lockdown and hey. beginning of post rut phase. Here in Delaware, I think there's a lot more drawn out rut. There's definitely still some chasing, but it's not quite to the degree that it was earlier. Uh, the gun seasons could have surely suppressed some of that. And with firearm season set to start in PA, yeah, those deer are gonna be looking for some sanctuaries for sure. Hopefully you enjoy these videos and you enjoy the vlog style. We've been trying to be more interactive and in showing you what we're doing and why we're doing it and not just what we're seeing while we're out there doing it. I haven't been out this much, uh, much this week during the firearm season except for one day, getting ready for our Colorado elk trip coming up right after Thanksgiving. Uh, but there's still some good deer hunting to come. I haven't been out much this week between the kids and work and everything I was getting ready and the little guy getting everybody sick in the house. So hopefully you enjoy this. Give us a like, give us a subscribe. It matters to us and we hope you enjoy this. And remember, if you're gonna get out there, be original.